<laughs> Sige, let's get started. So, again, um, Danny, just tell me if you're already recording and we're good to go. And if we're good to go... <coughs> Okay, so thank you so much, Danny. <coughs> Excuse. <coughs> Kayo inabutan nung ano, nung ubo-ubo ko. Kanina morning, konti lang. Anyways, ayan. So last time we talked about your um, history of your immune system and everything that was mentioned there contributed to everything that we know now when it comes to immunology. But again, just like what I mentioned during our orientation, immunology is fairly a new and a young science. That's why there's a lot of things yet to be discovered. So if you want to venture out into immunology, that's very, very welcome and that's very fine because there's a lot of things, a lot of phenomena inside our body involving the immune system that we need to explain and elaborate how they really happen in our body. And last time, we also did talk about um, the two types, correct? The two types of immunity. We talked about the innate immunity and also your acquired immunity. And we started off discussing the different, um, the different components of our um, innate immunity. So innate immunity, when we say innate immunity, we're pertaining to the natural immunity of our body. Meaning to say, when you were born, you will um, all of those were normally present. You don't need to be exposed to a particular infection or a particular um, a particular substance for you to develop it. It just really came naturally. Okay. So when we talk about um, innate immunity, um, I'm doing this review as anchor for our next discussion for today. So when we talk about innate immunity, isn't it? There are two. Uh, there are two parts of your innate immunity. The external defense system that um, corresponds to the anatomical barriers that we have, your intact skin, your um, the cilia on your mucosal membrane, even the um, biochemical substances that um, also is present together with your external defenses, your lactic acid in your sweat, your lysozymes, the acidity in your norm in your gastrointestinal tract, even the acidity in the um, vagina of our women, and also even the normal flora that you find that you can see not only in your gastrointestinal tract but literally all over your body. Okay, so those are part of our external defense system. When you were born, um, it they naturally develop alongside with your development as an individual. And also, aside from external defense system, we also have your internal defense system. Here comes now, okay, that the cellular and the humoral or the soluble components of our immune system. Last time, um, we already started off discussing the different acute phase reactants. So I hope you also <clears throat> finish that part of the video. So when we talk about the acute phase reactant, those are internal defense system found inside our body. Um, if you are reading other book, okay, if you're reading other book, um, as it was mentioned um, in Stevens and also in other references, they consider the internal defense system as the second line of defense. First line of defense are the external ones. Second line of defense are the internal defense system, which are usually... Uh, mechanisms of our body that are able to recognize specific molecular components of a particular pathogen. So later on, as we, we um, move along our discussion for today, we'll be discussing how is our body capable of recognizing molecular components from the different these different pathogens that allows us okay to respond into. Uh, a particular bacterial or a pathogenic evasion inside our body. So last time we started off already um, with the humoral, uh, humoral components or the humoral, uh, yeah, the humoral components of our innate immune system. So we talk about your acute phase reactants. 
we talk about your interferons. Uh, we'll be talking about your complement protein as a sep- in a separate discussion. Um, hopefully by fourth week of our discussion. So we'll be discussing complement proteins. But last time we talk about your what? <clears throat> We talk about, about different um, acute phase reactants such as follow. So you have your C-reactive protein, your serum amyloid A. So as you all know, uh, most of these uh, most of these acute phase reactants are very important in identifying early inflammation. So remember that these are non-specific, non-specific in a sense that uh, when your C-reactive protein are increased, it doesn't mean that you have this specific disease immediately okay so they can increase in a in various number of infection bacterial viral and even parasitic even um, non-communicable diseases they can also increase some of your inflammation um, your serum amyloid a together with all the other proteins that you see in front right now are all acute phase reactants so let's just um uh, set the record straight. When we talk about acute phase reactants, there are positive acute phase reactants and negative acute phase reactants. Remember in um, in your amino acid and protein in clinical chemistry one, when we talk about positive acute phase reactants, these are the proteins that increases during times of inflammation. So if you have inflammation, infection, your acute phase reactant, your positive acute phase reactant will increase. Again, they will increase. And on the other hand, if these um, um, acute phase reactants naman decreases during infection, we call them negative acute phase reactants. A classic example of a negative acute phase reactants are your albumin. Okay? Your albumin um, decreases during inflammation. Now, this acute phase reactant give us an idea that there is something going on um, in, in the body that needs to be arrested, that needs to be addressed. That's why these acute phase reactants are also increasing. Not only that, your acute phase reactants can also serve as opsonins. Remember when we talk about the his- in the history of uh, immunology, when they discovered um, phagocytosis. Together with that, they also discovered some soluble compounds, okay, acute phase reactants in that in that sense, that coats your um, antigen or coats the pathogen present in the body, increasing the efficiency of your phagocytosis. So these are different acute phase reactants. And just like what I was mentioning, um, and just like the uh, discovery <coughs> in uh, during the early stage of immunology, our immune system is not just composed of your humoral or your soluble compounds. They are also composed of different cellular components. And in this case, we will now be talking about the second part of our discussion about innate immune system, which will focus on your white blood cells. Some of these will be reviewed since you just finished your hematology one. But yeah, let's get started with your white blood cells. So when we talk about your white blood cells and innate or your natural immune system, we have to exclude and remove one. And not all your your white blood cells are part, okay? Not all your white blood cells are part of your natural or your innate immune system. So your neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, your monocyte, generally your granulocytes, all of them are part of your innate immune system except for your lymphocyte. Your lymphocyte is particularly part of your acquired or your um, your acquired or your adaptive immune system which we will be discussing in the coming weeks now when we talk about your white blood cells of course there are this will be a review lang ha, a review of your your hematology one some of your white blood cells increase in a particular type of infection okay so the first one let's go and start off our discussion the first ones are your neutrophils so your neutrophils are said to be the most abundant um white blood cell inside the body amounting to around 50 to 70 percent of the total peripheral white blood cell in an individual your neutrophils are 
very much abundant inside the body that they are the first cells to address or to go to a particular site of infection if any is present. So your neutrophils, ladies and gentlemen, mga kababayan, your neutrophils are the first one to respond. Okay? Dahil sila ang pinakamadami, they are the first one to respond. So they are capable of um, they are capable of phagocytosis, meaning to say they eat the the antigen or the, the pathogen present inside the body. So your neutrophil are able to to kill, destroy and digest this foreign materials because they contain large amount of neutral granules. Um, granules, particularly your primary or your azurophilic granules and your secondary granules that helps eradicate and digest the antigen or the pathogen present in the body. Now, when it comes to morphology, your neutrophils usually has two to five lobes. Two lobes specifically for band cells, okay, for your band cells. But as your band cell mature, they can have as much as five lobes. Remember that um, there's also a WBC anomaly that I also want you guys to remember, your hyper um, segmented neutrophils, hyper hyper segmented neutrophils would have more than five lobes and usually um, are indication of a severe bacterial infection. So generally, your neutrophils are increased because of bacterial infection and um, it's very important for us to also know that your neutrophils are parts of the phagocyte. Phagocyte meaning to say cells capable of phagocytosis which we will be discussing later on, okay? So remember that your neutrophil, they are the first, again, first one to the respond in times of infection. Aside from neutrophils, we also have, of course, your eosinophils. Your eosinophils are considered to have the most important role when it comes to neutralizing your basophil and mast cell products. Specifically, what are those products that we're talking about? Your heparin, and your histamine, okay? Those two products of basophil and mast cell elicit a severe immune response if uncontrolled in the body. I'm not saying that histamine is bad, okay? But excessive amount of histamine and heparin can be detrimental to our body, such as we call your anaphylactic shock. Now, your, your eosinophils are usually the one um, blamed for an allergic reaction. But the truth is, they are the one you see last because they are the one trying to fix what basophils and mast cell cause inside your body. Okay? So, your eosinophil has a very important role in, regulation, in regulating our immune response. Regulating particularly your mast cell and your basophils. Okay? So, they do have that hemotactic regulating or regulator uh, capability when it comes to inflammation. Aside from eosinophil being present during times of inflammation and allergic reaction, your eosinophil are very much famous because they are present in increased amount in times of helminthic infection. Okay? If you have any parasitic infection, your eosinophils will also be increased, okay? Your eosinophils will also be increased. Eosinophils are increased in times of helminthic um, infection because they are the only cell inside the body that has, okay? Of course, aside from, um, aside from natural killer cells, your eosinophils does have a very unique protein, your major basic protein that allows the um, the destruction and the digestion of your helminthic parasites, okay? Aside from that, they also have your eosinophil, cationic protein, and peroxidase that helps them arrest the effects of your basophils in your mast cell. I hope we're clear by this time, no, that your basophil in your mast cell in times of, take for example, there is a particular um, irritant inside our body. Your basophil and mast cell also wants the best for you. It's just that when they go in excess or when they come in excess, it becomes detrimental inside your body. That's why, again, eosinophil are the one usually being detected after a particular allergic 
reaction. Now, after eosinophil, okay, remember, ha, eosinophil, hemost- uh, hemostatic regula- regulator of inflammation, parasitic infection, allergic reaction. Next, we have your basophils. Okay? When we talk about your basophils, okay, your basophils are considered to be the smallest granulocyte. Not only the smallest, but the cell that has the the least amount of time inside our blood. Okay? So they only live for a few hours in your blood. That's why you don't usually see them when you are extracting blood. So your basophils, um, they do have this dark blue to black granules that contain cytokines, growth factors, histamine, and heparin. Histamine and heparin that are the, no- the ones notorious when it comes to allergic reaction. Did you know that your basophil can also stimulate the production of your immunoglobulin? Okay, specifically your immunoglobulin G or rather your immunoglobulin E or your IgE. Okay? Your IgE kasi, your immunoglobulin E, is very much important when it comes to allergic reaction and even parasitic infection. So your IgE will be the one that will turn on more basophils and more mast cells. Okay? So if in fa- if the inflammation is really needed, your basophil will, again, they will stimulate the production of your B cells. Okay? Your B cells will become plasma cell producing IgE, your immunoglobulin E, inside your body. So, that's about um, basophil. Okay? Your basophil um, produce um, your histamine that is a vasoactive amine that is generally um, present during allergic and allergic reaction and even inflammation. So aside from your neutrophils, your eosinophil, your basophil, the fourth one on the uh, on the different cell in your innate immune system are your what? Your monocytes. Your monocytes, okay, as com- as opposed to your basophil, they are the largest, largest in your peripheral blood. Okay, normal ha, normal and largest. So your monocytes are aside from size. Your monocyte is also different from your basophil because your monocyte can stay up to 70 hours in your blood. Okay? They can stay up to 70 hours in your blood and they do contain uh, important granules that should help your neutrophil in your phagocytosis. So they do contain type 1 granules that contains peroxidase, acid phosphatase, and aryl sulfatase. And your type 2 granules, they do contain your glucuronidase, your lysozyme, and your lipase. I mentioned your monocyte helping your neutrophils. Yes. So your your neutrophils um, are the first one to respond. But there are times that they also get overwhelmed. So at times that your 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 neutrophils are overwhelmed by the infection, your monocytes and your macrophage are to the rescue. Okay? Again, your monocytes and your macrophage are to the rescue. Let me just differentiate monocyte and macrophage later. So aside from type 1 and type 2 granules, they also have your leukotrienes. Your leukotrienes um, is a newly identified class of compounds among your monocytes that helps mediate inflammatory function of your locus of your all of your leukocytes. So your leukotrienes are like an activator of your WBC, especially in times of infection. Now, before I move forward to macrophage, I want to highlight your lipase. Okay, your lipase is a unique um, enzyme found on your monocyte, not found in your mo- in your neutrophil. That's why there are certain bacteria that cannot be killed or cannot be arrested by your neutrophil because they do not have lipase. An example of these are your mycoplasma and your mycobacterium species. Only your monocyte can arrest them, okay? Because it is only monocyte that has the enzyme capable of digesting the outer membrane of these bacteria. Now, we, when we talk about monocyte, monocyte is the one found in your peripheral blood. 
like as, as we are talking right now, inside your blood vessel, you can see monocytes inside. Correct? Now, if your monocyte starts to think na, sabi niya, I think I need to grow, I need to mature, and I need to move out from the blood vessel, okay? That monocyte now becomes your macrophage. Macropho all macrophages arise from your monocyte, okay? okay? That's one reality that we can never, ever change. All of your macrophages are monocyte to start with. Your, mo your macrophages lang um, is far more different because your macrophages your macrophages committed to stay in a terminal organ meaning to say nung pinili nilang pumunta sa liver they will stay in the liver forever and ever amen okay so those are your macrophages again your macrophages similar to your monocyte um helps your neutrophil in in, in the event that the neutrophil is not efficient enough during phagocytosis, your macrophages and your monocyte will be the one to finish the fight. Okay? Neutrophils kasi are fast. Macrophages and monocytes are slower compared to your compared to your neutrophils. That's why they arrive in the in site of infection later compared to your neutrophil. But they are, they perform a very important role which is to arrest anything that the neutrophil was not able to finish in that particular site of infection. Not only is that um, macrophages and monocytes are like backups when it comes to um, phagocytosis, they're also important because they are keep up, they somehow bridge the innate and the adaptive immune system. Again, they bridge the innate and the adaptive immune system. How? Because of what, because of the phenomenon which we call antigen presentation, okay? Antigen presentation is somehow the window between natural and your adaptive immune system, okay? The reason why you have memory, the, the reason why your immune system have memory can first be class, can first be traced because of your innate immune system, okay? So remember that. When it comes now to your macrophages, um, they are collect the your macrophages together with your dendritic cells collectively we call them your antigen presenting cells. All right, your antigen presenting cells. That's why there is somehow a feature between macrophage and dendritic cell that merge. Okay, that merge or bridges the innate and the adaptive immune system. Okay? Now, since we're talking about macrophages living in a terminal organ, residing in a terminal organ, there are specific terms or uh, we call these macrophages specific name to correspond to their or um, terminal organ. As for your lungs, okay, in your histology, na basa nyo na to, in your lungs, we call them your alveolar macrophage. In some textbook, we call this your dust cell, D-U-S-T, D-U-S-T cell or dust as in alikabo. Okay? So your lungs has your alveolar macrophage. In some textbook, we call it your dust cell. Um, in your liver, you also have your cup for cells. Please take note of the spellings. In your brain, you have your microglial cells. In your connective tissue, you have your histocytes. In your skin, you have your Langerhans cell. In your bone, you have your osteoclast. In your kidney, you have your uh, macroglial cell. Okay, so those are yeah, um, those are the different macrophages that you can see all over your body. So your macrophages can stay there for longer period of time. Okay. So, if your macrophages can stay for around 70 minutes, 70 hours in your in your blood vessel, they can persist for longer period of time when they are on their terminal organ. Okay? So those are your macrophages. Next, we also have your mast cells. Okay? Your mast cell is like is very similar to your basophil, similar in a sense that the the effect that they elicit inside our body is very similar for the reason that they actually contain the same 
um, their granules contain the same um, enzymes like your acid phosphatase, alkaline phosphatase, your protease, and even your histamine. Now, when it comes to your mast cell, as you can see, they are they don't have the large dark granules as your basophils have. Um, your mast cell have granules, pero as you can see, yung granules nila doesn't um, doesn't cover. Okay, doesn't cover. Wait, hindi ko makita yung wait ayan. It doesn't cover your nucleus. Okay, it doesn't cover your nucleus. So just like what I was mentioning then kanina, your mast cell, aside from the size, your mast cell is larger than your basophil. And when it comes to lifespan, um, your mast cell can stay for around 9 to 18 months. Okay? For 9 to 18 months. So, it's very important no, to remember that so that we can easily um, classify or differentiate a mast cell from a basophil. In addition to that, as you can see, um, we have your immunoglobulin E here. So, kanina, I mentioned that your basophil um, stimulate the production of your immunoglobulin E, IgE. And those IgE not only respond to your uh, basophil and your eosinophil, they also respond to your mast cell. They attach to your mast cell and once that um, another antigen is present, take for example, a particular individual is allergic to nuts. And kumain siya ng peanut, so ayan, um, the antigen will be binding to the IgE, will be binding to your antibody. And the binding will lead to the granulation. What do you mean by the granulation? Itong laman niya to, ACP, alkaline phos, uh, protease, and histamine, all of these will be released into the bloodstream, leading now to a to, leading now to an inflammation or allergic reaction in our patient. Okay? So are we clear so far, O1? Can I see a raise of any for clear so far, please? Okay, so those are your mast cells. Okay, those are your mast cells. We're still in chapter one of Hen or of Stevens. Huh? Aside from mast cell, we also have your dendritic cells. Your dendritic cells are covered with long uh, membranous extension. The why the reason why we call it dendritic cells is it is because it resembles the nerve then the nerve cell. Okay, remember your nerve cell has dendrites. Okay, it looks like dendrites of your nerve cell, but your nerve cell is in your central nervous system. Your dendritic cell are also phagocytes. Okay? Their main function is to phagocytose antigen. And similar to your monocyte and macrophage, they also present it to your T helper cell. It's very important for you guys to remember your dendritic cell. Please write this down. It will not be part, <laughs> it will not come out of the PowerPoint. But your dendritic cell are considered to be the most efficient antigen-presenting cells. Again, your dendritic cells are considered to be the most efficient antigen-presenting cell. So what is antigen-presenting, antigen-presentation ba? Again, we'll be discussing that um, next meeting. Kasi matatapos ako ngayon sa phagocytosis. Um, I-discuss natin what is antigen-presentation on our next meeting, okay? But to give you an idea, always remember that um, the dendritic cell and the macrophages, they process the antigen first, okay? Take for example, um, sige, sabihin na natin, kunwari, we're studying complement system. Um, the the complement system is a foreign body, something that you do not know yet, okay? Me, my job as a professor is to simplify it, explain it to you well, so that you'll be able to understand it. In this case, I'm like the dendritic cell. I would be the one to study the complement system, um, simplify it, study it, and then present it to you. You guys are the lymphocytes. Okay? You guys are the T-helper cell. T-helper cell needs bite-sized information that they can process so that they can elicit an immune response, they can produce antibody, they can um, go on and trigger an immune response, uh, a generalized uh, immune response. Your lymphocyte, your T-helper cell needs that. So in that case, parang ganun din yung nangyari sa atin. 
Um, we have an information. I process it first. I presented it to you. Then hopefully you'll be able to understand it better, faster, and you can respond faster and also better. That's the job of your dendritic cell. When they have or when they engulf a particular pathogen, they process and digest the pathogen first. And then what they will present to your T helper cell are only the key protein of that particular pathogen para makagawa tayo ng antibodies at makapag-elicit ng immune response yung ating immune system. This is also the very same reason, uh, very same uh, concept of how vaccines are produced. We do not introduce the entire anti uh, entire um, pathogen to an individual, although there is a, a case like that, attenuated vaccine. But that's not the cuento today. Um, so ang ginagawa natin, we just choose a particular part ng bacteria. Para ganun si dendritic cell. They choose a particular part that they will present. Something unique. That's something that um, our cells will uh, will immediately recognize. Okay? So are we clear so far? It, are we making sense when it comes to dendritic cell? And antigen presentation, antigen presenting cell. So... I will call them ano na ha, I will call them phagocyte. Phagocyte cells capable of phagocytosis, dendritic cell, monocyte, macrophage and your neutrophils. Okay? But the one na capable of antigen presentation are only two. Monocyte, macrophage and your dendritic cell. Okay? They are the one that present the cell or the one that present the antigen. I'll explain that next meeting, promise. Okay? So now, like what we were talking about, diba? These particular cells are capable of phagocytosis, which I've been mentioning a while, um, all day, um, all along, since the start of this discussion. Now, before we head over to that, let us first um, talk about, sir, how does this cell, ba? How does this cell identify that this particular a molecule here is an antigen that needs to be killed, that needs to be arrested. Correct? So not every not every cell are capable of like capable of that. And if you all know that the essence now of autoimmune disease, eh, because your body is attacking its own. Okay? But remember, your innate immune system, even if Okay, even if their respond their response is not specific, when I say not specific, general kasi yan eh. Kumbaga lahat ng makita nila na ganito, kakainin nila. Okay? Unlike ano eh, um kapag nakita ka ng pork, laging luto mo adobo. For the rest of your life, adobo, adobo, adobo lang yan. General lang yung treatment mo dun sa isang bagay. Unlike kapag specific, o kuno eh, pumasok dito si uh, pumasok dito si si Ah, si Batas. Ah, dahil si Batas gusto niya ng masim-masim, siniga. Ah, nandito naman si si Baroso. Ah, okay, ang ang luto naman nito, um, paksiyo. Paksiyo na ba? Na ba, boy? Ay, ganun ba? So, lechon paksiyo. Ganyan. So, as you can see, specific pag-adaptive. Ang ating innate immune system, general lang yan. Okay? General lang. And I want to go back dun sa isa nating uh, in a particular statement that we mentioned that our internal defense system, they are capable of recognizing specific molecular components of a particular pathogen. What do you mean by that? They are able to identify a molecule present only on your pathogen na wala sa katawan mo para hindi niya ina-attack yung sarili mo. So they are able to differentiate which one to kill and which one to keep. Okay? Which one to kill and which one to keep. Now, those uh, those capacity or capability of our cells rely on what we call generally as your I wait now. Rely on what we call generally as your pathogen recognition receptors, PRRs. Okay, these are your PRR. So your pathogen recognition receptors, they act as they act as sensor for exter extracellular function. Okay? So, ikaw, mga kababayan, mga kapatid, your white blood cells, your phagocytes, in particular, has 
pathogen recognition receptors. They act as sensor para kapag may dumaan na, okay, wait lang, kalaban yun. Di ba? They would know who to kill. Now, important na dahil alam natin, ah, okay, yung cell, our cells do contain pathogen recognition receptor. So, what do, what do they recognize? Di ba? What is it that, uh, what about this uh, sensors that um, that are recognizing in the uh, pathogens that they are able to respond? Okay? So, your PRR, okay, your PRR detects your PAMP or your PAMPs. Um, your pathogen recognition receptors are sensors that identifies or um, that, yeah, that identifies your pathogen-associated molecular patterns. So, when we say pathogen-associated molecular patterns, these are only found on your pathogen. Nakikita lang sila sa ating mga pathogen. And these molecules are specific only to those pathogens. Such as what? Peptidoglycan in your gram-positive, your lipoproteins in your gram-negative, your zymosan in your yeast and your flagellin for your flagellate bacteria. Now, some of you will be wondering, sir, may lipoprotein, may lipoprotein din ng tao. Yes, but these are different type of protein. Lipo, uh, polysaccharides, okay, lipoproteins that are usually found in your gram-negative bacteria. Okay? Again, ha, your pathogen recognition receptor are able to distinguish uh, molecules um, present from our body and from the pathogen and in return they're able to elicit an immune response okay they're able to elicit an immune response in the case of our phagocyte alam nila kung sino ang kakainin okay again ha let me reiterate your pumps are only found on your microorganisms again ang pumps natin nakikita lamang po sa ating mga microorganisms Nagkakaintindihan ba? Can I see a raise of honey for clear? Malinaw? Okay, good. Now, an example. Uh, magbigay tayo ng example ng pathogen recognition receptor na meron tayo ngayon as we speak. And these are what we call now your TRL or your toll-like receptors. Okay? Remember, ladies and gentlemen, your toll-like receptors, okay, your toll-like receptors, ito na yung mismong pathogen recognition receptor na makikita sa ating cell. Can I see a raise of hand if we're clear? So, all of your phagocytes, all of your leukocytes have in, has increased levels of toll-like receptor. So, ano bang ginagawa ni toll-like receptor? Okay, bago natin siya tsikahin, kilalanin muna natin siya. Your toll-like receptors was first discovered by Charles Janeway. Okay? Paano nila na-discover um, yung toll-like receptor? They actually found, they actually first discovered it in Drosophila fly, uh, Drosophila fruit fly. Ayan, Drosophila fruit fly. Your Drosophila fruit fly kasi has a characteristic of antifungal property. Meron siyang antifungal, hindi siya nagkaka- um, nagkaka-fungi, hindi siya nai-infect ng fungi. And they actually wondered, why? Okay, nagtaka sila, bakit? Ganyan. So, when they discovered, they actually discovered proteins in your drosophila fly that eventually later on, they also discovered this, a similar, again, ha, hindi yung nakita sa, sa langaw, nakita rin sa'yo, hindi. Um, they actually found a similar protein, okay, that has is, is the same um, purpose or the same function. That's why we call they call them now your toll-like receptor. Okay, para silang toll, uh, kaya nga sila tinawag na toll-like kasi para silang toll na nasa surface ng cell. Okay? <coughs> that is found on your cell. So, what does your toll-like receptors do? Okay? Your toll-like receptors, okay, recognize molecules that are commonly found <coughs> in your microbial pathogen, yung pumps. Yun yung pinag-uusapan natin kanina. They recognize molecules that are found in your microbial pathogen, your pumps, pathogen <coughs> associated, <coughs> excuse, your pathogen associated um, molecular patterns na wala sa human host. Okay? So they were able to identify that. 
And what is um, ang nangyayari kasi is that your tolic receptors becomes like a signaling pathway that will trigger the production of cytokines na mag enhance ng, in- ng inflammatory re- response will also call out other cells in the infection site. So those are, these tolic receptors are very important. Okay? Very important because um, these are like first line, sabi ko nga, di ba? These are like second line of defense inside our body that will wake up the entire immune system. Hey, hey, para itong mga marites. Okay? Para itong mga marites na na taga ano taga pakalat ng mga nagbabagang balita okay so you're going back here okay your your toll like receptors ladies and gentlemen okay your ayo gumalaw ng akin powerpoint wait na your toll like receptors okay your toll like receptors has high uh, concentration among your phagocytes which are your monocytes ayo gumalaw your monocytes your macrophage, and your neutrophils. Okay? Your monocyte, your macrophage, and your neutrophils. Of course, kasama din dyan si um, dendritic cells. Okay? So now, uh, parang ganito, I, I have a short animation for you guys. This is how tall like receptors um, act inside our body. So take for example, example, ayaw gumala. Take for example, ayan, si TLR. Tapos may nakita siyang incoming. Ayan, di ba? Nag-signal siya agad. Bakit siya nag-signal? Kasi may nakita siyang incoming na infection. May incoming na uh, pathogen. So, ganun dun sa at, ganun yung ginagawa nila sa ating katawan. They identify, they signal the entire uh, immune system so that it will, it can elicit and it can enhance an inflammatory response para i-arrest yung pumasok na infection sa ating katawan. Nagkakaintindihan ba tayo? Can I see a hand kung malinaw tayo so far? Okay, now. Next. Now that we have your toll-like receptors, it's also important to know, um, sir, ang toll-like receptors, maybe some of you will be wondering, sir, are toll-like receptors um, the same for everyone? Like the toll-like receptor that identify the peptidoglycan is the same that will identify the lipoprotein, zymosan, flagellin, things like that. The answer is no. Okay? That's why this table that you see now inside in front of you, you need to memorize. Now, we have different toll-like receptors. Uh, toll-like receptors 1 through 10. Some can be found inside our cell, we, which we call your endosomal com, uh, endosomal uh, TRLs. We have endosomal TRLs because there are some intracellular pathogens such as um, some bacteria are intracellular, but they're also, most importantly, okay, viruses. Viruses are always intracellular. So they are obligate intracellular. So we also need toll-like receptors that will identify any foreign material that has already been um, inside our cells. Aside from that, of course, we have your TRL that are found on the surface. So those that identify lipopeptides are TRL1, uh, TRL2 for your peptidoglycan, lipoprotein, and zymozan. There are overlap, okay? But during my exams naman, I do not ask the overlap. I ask the one um, unique to the particular TRL. So you have to memorize that. Okay, there's only one that um, has your peptidoglycan that is only TRL2. Only one that um, attaches to your lipopro- lipopolysaccharide and fusion protein and even manan. That is only TRL4. Your flagellin is only TRL5. Lipotechoic acid is only for TRL6. So please remember those, okay, for our upcoming exams. So now, just to wrap it up, for you guys know, we have different, our innate immune system has new humoral, um, your humoral components, the acute phase reactants, ceruloplasmin, haptoglobin, things like that. And they also have the cellular components, your granulocyte, your um, neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, monocyte, macrophage, dendritic cell, mast cell, and also, sa susunod nating um, discussion, yung natural killer cell, because natural killer cell is another topic of its own. So, you see that we have your pat, your your white blood cells, okay? Your white blood cell, White blood cells except for your lymphocytes, okay? 
So they they do have their pathogen recognition receptor. An example of that is your toll-like receptor that are able to identify pumps or pathogen associated molecular patterns, okay, that are only seen in pathogens. That's why our cells are capable of identifying, okay, this is one is kalaban, this one is kakampi. You don't need to kill this. We need to kill that. So our body is capable of identifying that through this pathogen recognition receptors. Okay? Now, are there any questions or clarifications so far? If not, can I see a raise of hand, please? Kung malinaw tayo, and we can move on. Okay, thank you so much. Now, let's talk about your phagocytosis. Your phagocytosis, not all cells are capable of phagocytosis in this particular level. Your phagocy when we talk about phagocytosis, okay, na napindot ko na, magre-review question sana ako. Ano first name ni Mechnikov? Sige nga, ano na lang first name ni Mechnikov? The one who discovered your phagocytosis, okay? It is Ellie Mechnikov. Okay? Ellie Mechnikov is the first to describe, okay, single L lang ha, single L. Okay? Ellie Mechnikov, one L only. Okay, sinabi ko na ha, so wala akong i-consider na maling sagot sa quiz. Okay, so Ellie Mechnikov, single L, okay, was the first one to describe phagocytosis. They observed, um, he was able to observe cells eating other cells, bacterial cells in particular. So your phagocytosis, remember, is a process of engulfment and destruction of foreign cells or particulate matters by your leukocytes macrophage, and other cell. So, remember that our cells are capable of, di ba may tinawag tayong endocytosis, exocytosis. Your endocytosis is divided into two, correct? Phagocytosis and pinocytosis. Cell drinking, yung pangalawa. So, phagocytosis is cell eating. Remember that phagocytosis is only for extracellular organisms. Okay? Extracellular in a sense that kapag nasa labas lang, kaya nilang kainin. Pero kapag the bacteria or the infection, the pathogen is intracellular, that's another story for another time. Doon magbabalik ang ating natural killer cell next meeting. Okay? Malinaw tayo. So, kalma-kalma lang tayo dito para maintindihan nyo ng mabuti ang ating mga kwento. Okay? So, your phagocytosis, this is how it happened. Your WBC, your leukocytes are able to engulf the bacterial cell. And not only engulf, kasi pag kinain mo, so what? Diba? Andyan pa rin siya sa loob ng katawan. It needs to be destroyed. And as we go along, we will now be talking about the different steps in phagocytosis. So the first step in phagocytosis um, can vary from different books kasi ha. It can vary from different books, but we're gonna follow the one from Stevens. So I'll just interject some of the information coming from the other book para you can write it down in your notes and para maging masustansya ang inyong mga notes. Okay, so the first step is your initiation stage. Okay, your initiation stage, this is the time where um, there's an increased surface receptor that allows for adherence. Adherence of what, sir? Adherence of your phagocyte. Your phagocyte needs to adhere in um, in the site of infection so that um, phagocytosis can start. So, sir, what specifically are these receptors that increase? Receptors that can increase can either be um, um, adhesion molecules like P-selectins. P-selectins can help ad, um, in the adherence of your WBC, or it can also be other substances and proteins such as your acute phase reactants. Yung mga acute phase reactants natin nag increase at the very moment na meron kang infection. Bakit? Why? Because it needs to increase so that it can also enhance phagocytosis, which is what we call your opsonins, opsonization. Mamaya, pag-usapan natin yung opsonization. So what, the first thing that happened is your adherence. Okay, a lot of sub compound is released to help the phagocyte adhere to the site of infection or more importantly, adhere to the pathogen itself. Next, after the initiation stage, okay, meron tayong problema, uh, what, will, what will happen next? We will now start to recruit, okay? We will now start to 
recruit. And this process is what we call your chemotaxis. Chemotaxis is the process where your neutrophils, monocytes, your other phagocytes migrate to the site of infection. Ito yung mismong transit nila papunta doon sa site of infection. We call it chemotaxis. A very common misunderstanding or a, co- a, a very common um, term that is being substituted to chemotaxis is diapidesis. Okay, what is diapidesis? Diapidesis is the process in which your white blood cells or let's just say cell. Okay? Diapidesis is a process whereby your cell transverse, okay, or tumatagos sila sa my blood vessel. Remember, your blood vessel is made up of different layers. Okay? Vascular intima, which is one, the one we'll be talking about tomorrow for hema. So, your vascular your vascular intima, di ba yung vascular intima mo, tight yan. Kaya nga hindi nakakalabas yung dugo eh. Pero yung blo- yung yung Uh, white blood cells mo, they are capable of penetrating and passing through your blood vessel. And yung process mismo na yun, okay, is what we call diapidesis. Are we clear? Can I see a race of any quick clear? So, take for example, um, your, your white blood cell will go out of your blood vessel so that it can go to the site of injury. Yung paglabas niya mismo sa blood vessel, that is diapidesis. But the entire process of the blood ve- of the bo- the white blood cell going into your uh, site of infection, that general pr- that general process is what we call chemotaxis. Nagkakaintindihan tayo, guys. Kasi baka malito kayo, sir, diapidesis po kasi sinagot ko. Ah, sir, kasi chemotaxis po kasi gin- sinagot ko. Okay, are we clear with that? Kasi diapidesis, um, diapidesis, um, yung mismong, kunwari, pag ikaw, pupunta ka sa, when, when sabi na natin, pag pupunta ka sa, kunwari, koron, magkailangan mo mag-airplane. Yung flight mo mismo, that is chemotaxis. Pero yung paglabas mo, kunwari, ng bahay, paglabas mo ng gate, paglabas mo ng iyong kaharian, that is diapidesis. Nagkakaintindihan tayo? Can I see a van for clear, please? Malinaw? Okay. Now, your chemotaxis is a phenomenon happening inside our body during phagocytosis. And there are chemicals, chemical messenger that influences our cell. Okay? And what this is what we these are what we call now your chemotaxins. What are chemotaxins? Chemotaxins, okay? are substances that um, stimulate or trigger your white blood cells to migrate. Okay, but before I go ahead of myself, remember that there is a test that we can perform to test your chemotaxis. Ang cell ko ba, ang white blood cell ko ba, nakakapag-respond ng maayos sa chemotaxins? Well, it's one way to find out. Let's perform your Boyden chamber assay. Okay? So, your Boyden chamber assay is a test for chemotaxis. Ito, um, in this particular test, we expose the cell to chemotaxins and see if they are able to respond to the chemotaxins. Okay? So, what are chemotaxins again? Chemotaxins are simply substances that are released by bacteria or by injured tissue and also white blood cell that stimulate the movement of neutrophil and other white blood cells to the injured site. Okay, chemotaxins are like chika. Okay? Ito yung mga chika na, 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 na experience yun na yun na, huy, meron daw ano, meron daw ganito sa may um, patio, dun sa may uh, quadrangle. O di ba lahat naman ng tao pupunta dun? Okay? So, nag, nag mamigrate lahat ng tao papunta dun sa site of ano? site of, of happening. Ganon din sa ating mga white blood cell. Your chemotaxin are compounds or substances that are either released by your bacteria, ng injured cell mo, or even ng white blood cell mo. White blood cell na kasi magtatawag sila, guys, hindi namin to kaya, we need more. Okay? So, your white blood cells are able to go to the site of infection. Okay? So, those are chemotaxins. Remember, also, that your chemotaxins has two types. Meron tayong positive chemotaxin, meron tayong negative chemotaxin. 
Okay? Parang re- ihalin tulad natin siya sa green, yung mga nauusog green flag, red flag. Yung green flag are, ay parang positive chemotoxin. The more you see, the more it attracts, uh, the more you are attracted to go to that particular site of infection. Di ba? Ganon yung positive chemotoxin. Parang green flag. Parang, oh shucks, ito yung hinahanap ko sa isang tao. Ganyan, ganyan. So, parang ikaw, mas nagiging ano yung affinity mo dun sa taong yon, Tama? Parang ganon din sa mga cell. Pag nakita nila, oh my gosh, yeah, okay, positive chemotoxin, they will migrate towards the site of infection. Meron din tayong mga negative. Okay? Meron din tayong mga negative chemotoxins. Para naman itong mga red flag. The more you see it, the more that you run away. Diba? The more that you don't go to that particular site of infection. Kanina, during my seven, during my 7.30 class ng immuno, somebody asked me, Sir, what are the what are instances na meron daw negative acute phase reactant? Negative acute phase reactants are usually released kapag, kunwari, it's too much na in that particular, ano, uh, too much na dun sa particular, uh, tawag dito, too much na dun sa particular area. So, kunwari, mga pwedeng steroids para ma, para kumalma na yung mga white blood cells mo, di ba? Instead na... Oh my gosh, nakabalik na ba ako? Hello, I'm here, I'm back. Hello, hello. Yes, sir. Can somebody tell, can somebody, ano, nandito na ba ako ulit? Okay, yes, sir. Wala. Sa negative acute phase reactants po. Saan ako part na wala? Okay, negative chemotoxins yun ha. Hindi negative acute phase reactant. Negative chemotoxins. Okay? Kasi kung negative acute phase reactant, ang layo ko. Ang layo nung nawala ako. So, negative chemotoxins to. Ah. Negative chemotoxins. Not negative acute phase reactant. That's different. Okay? Okay, going back. Okay lang tayo. Ayan, thank you. Okay, so your negative, chemo- your negative chemotoxin would, ano naman, would repel. Di ba? Okay, wag na kayo dito. Magsilayas kayo. Doon na kayo sa... Ah, uh, wag kayong pumunta dito sa sa site of infection, okay? So this is this is actually the first thing that happens during phagocytosis. As, as you can see, sir, bakit kailangan may chemotoxins? Always remember this guys, okay? The movement of your white blood cells inside the body are very are random. Parang para silang alam mo yung have you ever tried yung mag, naglakad ka lang, naglakad ka lang pero hindi mo alam kung saan ka papunta. Oh, di ba? So parang kunare example nga namin kanina para tong mga barangay tanod. Di ba? Yung mga barangay tanod umiikot, nagroronda. So parang ganoon yung mga white blood cells natin eh. Very random. Hindi mo alam kung saan pupunta. Uh, ngayon, hindi mo alam kung saan, saan siya next. So very random yung movement nila. Until, dun kunwari sa sitio 1, merong isang nag-aaway or may mga nag, may nagsuntukan. Automatically, lahat ng mga barangay tanod magsuswarm yan papunta lahat sa sitio 1 nagigets tayo that is chemotaxis. Okay? So on a normal basis ang mga WBC natin random lang. Parang rumoronda lang sa ikot-ikot lang, ganyan, hindi alam kung saan pupunta. Pero once na meron ng chemotaxin, specifically a positive chemotaxin which is also the most common, lahat sila sabay-sabay ni Marian Rivera, sabay-sabay tayo, okay? Sabay-sabay silang pupunta dun sa site of infection. Okay? So, nagkakaintindihan ba tayo? So, nag-guess naman ninyo, no, na on a normal basis, um, random yung movement ng cell. Kaya, kailangan natin ng chemotaxin to call them, okay, hey, 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 this is what we're going to go, this is what we're going to do, this is where we're going to go, okay? So, you guys need to, ano, you, you guys need to follow me. Parang ganon. So, yun yung nangyayari during chemotaxis. Na, malinaw ba tayo? Can I see a raise of hand if clear tayo? Are sir, clear? question hmm, po. Yes. Ito yung kailan po ulit, sir, nag, uh, lumalabas, sir, yung sa negative chemotoxins po. Okay. Yung, yung negative chemotoxin mo, number one, um, kapag kunwari, overloaded na yung immune response mo, we need to, ano, we, kasi ang immune system natin, meron tayong mga pro-inflammatory, meron din tayong mga cytokines 
na pang anti-inflammatory. Tayo mismo, yes, hindi mo kailangan uminom ng gamot. Meron ka, okay? That regulates your immune, that regulates your immune system. Yung mga yon, okay, can be released kapag overloaded na yung isang immune response. Kunwari, enough na yung immune response, mag-resend na ng negative um, chemotaxin para tumigil na yung pag-migrate ng mas madami pang mga um, mga cells dun sa site of infection. Malinaw tayo? Clear? Okay po, sir. Ayan. So, yun yung, yun yung example. Although mas madalas talaga rin kasi, mas madalas yung positive. Mas madalas yung positive chemotoxins rather than yung negative ones. Okay? So, yun yung ano natin sa chemotoxin. Okay, clear tayo dun, no? So, um, ang nangyari, okay, meron ng bacteria na dyan na, na kung na rin, nag-chemotoxis na sila lahat, di ba? Chemotoxis, eto na, ang pagkaharap, okay? Nagkaharap-harap na yung mga cells at yung mga bacteria, yung mga pathogen na kailangan nating puksain. So, what will happen? Okay? What will happen next is your engulfment. Okay? The pro the process called engulfment. In your engulfment, your white blood cells would start to show or would start to have your pseudopods. Yung pseudopods nila, parang dito sa um, GIF, sa picture na to, yung pseudopods na yan, mag-open up, di ba bilog lang yung cell mo, mag-open up yung, yung cell mo, magkakaroon ng pseudopods, at i-engulf niya yung ating pathogen. Okay? In the process of engulfment, na in, the pathogen is enclosed in a phagocytic vacuole which we call your phagosome. Okay? Magkakaroon ka na ng phagosome. So, para ano yan? Parang, um, syempre, hindi tayo kumakain, kunwari candy. Hindi ka tayo kumakain ng candy na nasa wrapper. Syempre. Diba? Or baka meron kumakain sa inyo ng wrapper. Okay? So, para ang nangyari dito, during engulfment, kinain niya, tapos nagkaroon ng vacuole that will coat the pathogen. That is what we call your phagosome. Malinaw? Afterwards, your phagosome will fuse with your lysosome, forming now your phagolysosome. This process is what we call now your fusion. Fusion of your phagosome. Phagosome is where your pathogen is and your lysosome. Okay, lysosome is an organelle of your cell that contains digestive enzymes that will help okay, digest the pathogen. So, what will happen kapag nandyan na yung yung phagosome sa loob ng cell ng 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 phagocyte natin si lysosome magfo-fuse na rin magfo-fusion na sila okay magfo-form sila ng phagolysosome and after phagolysosome what they would do is to digest destroy and kill that pathogen but before i get ahead of myself okay during engulfment pwede naman nating i-enhance or pwede nating i-increase pa yung efficiency ng phagocytosis. And that is through the help of substances that coats the particle that makes the, that makes the organism or that makes the pathogen more susceptible to phagocytosis. And these are substances which we call generally as opsonins. Ang opsonins natin pwedeng mag- uh, yung opsonins natin can be of different types. Your opsonins can be your Um, antibodies, your opsonin can be your complement protein, your opsonins can be your um, ac acute phase reactants. Yung mga opsonins na yan, kunwari ito yung pathogen. Yung opsonins na yan, para yung mga um, irarap nila yung ating pathogen para si phagocyte, kunwari si monocyte or si dendritic cell, mas, mas mabilis niyang makita, mas mabilis niya rin ma-engulf yung pathogen that is present inside your body. Are we clear? Are we clear with opsonins? And that process no, that happened, that is what we call your opsonization. Your opsonization is a process whereby your opsonins or soluble compounds coat a particular pathogen para mas ma-enhance, mas mapabilis yung phagocytosis. Are we clear? Can I see a raise of hand? If we're clear, please. Malinaw tayo. So, bigyan natin ng kunwari mga real-life situation. Ang, di ba parang, have you ever, ano, have you, kunwari, meron ka, meron binigay sa'yo si, meron binigay sa'yo si, ano, si, kunwari si, ano, si, si Jonas. Guys, gusto, namiss nyo na ba yung kwek-kwek sa tapat ng 7-Eleven? Kunwari mga fishball doon. 
kunwari si Jonas nag, nagdala siya ng quick ng ano ng fishball. Marami sa atin ang unang hahanapin kay Jonas. Jonas nasaan yung sausawan? 'Di ba? So parang ganun kasi yung optionin. Your optionin are parang sausawan na nagkinot niya yung pathogen para mas masarap ang kain. Nagigets tayo doon. So yung option, 'di ba ikaw, yung fishball na walang halo-halong sausaw. Parang hindi mo bet kainin agad, 'di ba? Pero pag yung yung fishball may sausawan, ay pa agad-agad baka ubos mo nga yan agad. 'Di ba? Parang ganun din sa phagocytosis. Yung sa engulfment, yung process ng optionization is needed para mas mapabilis yung engulfment ng pathogen at para mas mabilis mapatay yung bacteria or yung pathogen sa loob ng ating katawan. Malinaw ba tayo? Can I share you if we're clear? Okay. Kung ako sa iyo, isulat mo na rin pati yung fishball analogy natin. Para pag times na hindi mo, ah, paano na nga ulit yung optionization? Ganon. Ma- matatandaan mo kung anong, paano siya nangyayari. Now, after all of that is be said and done, what will happen? Siyempre, kailangan i-digest at kailangan i-excrete yung ating um, i-excrete yung ating pathogen. So, your digestive enzymes that are found initially in your lysosome will fuse with your phagosome, phagolysosome, and madadigest na yung iyong bacteria or your pathogen. I'll say pathogen na lang para general, okay? Your it will digest your your micro, your pathogen and in return it can now be excreted. Excreted through the process exo cytosis exo o oh, oh, ba okay so exo exocytosis so the, the release of your cellular substances contained in a cell vesicle by fusion on a vesicular membrane with your plasma and then be it will be released from your exterior in for to the exterior exterior of your cell parang ganto so kapag okay na ang lahat di ba uh, kailangan mo na siyang i-release out of the cell. Okay? And here, here comes antigen presentation. Dito ma, dito importante si antigen presentation. Kasi sabi ko nga, kuno may um na-imagine niyo na parang give me something, I'll I'll produce something else out of it. Parang ganoon kasi yung antigen presenting cells natin. Antigen presenting cells natin, what are the two antigen presenting cells na sinabi ko kanina? Anyone or on the chat box? What are the two antigen presenting cells that we mentioned? Okay, dendritic cells. Aside from dendritic cells, ano pa? We also have your macrophage or your monocytes. Okay? So those are your antigen presenting cell. Kapag meron silang kunwari, um kunwari itong wrapper na to. Pag present ito ng antigen presenting cell natin, yung pinakaimportanteng detalye na lang, yung kanyang ipepresent doon sa ating lymphocytes. Okay? So, i-explain ko sa inyo yan ng maayos next meeting. Okay? So, ayan yung phagocytosis natin kung makikita ninyo. Ayan, sabi natin kanina, di ba, nag-adhere, okay, tapos, um, nagkaroon ng receptor. Itong receptor, paano ito nangyari, sir? Okay, yan yung mga toll-like receptors mo. Pwede rin yan yung mga receptor mo, tapos may opsonin. Ayan, so yung pseudopods, phagosome, nag-fuse si lysosome, naging phagolysosome na digest, okay, exocytosis to secrete your soluble debris. Okay? Now, after that, eto, mas malinaw na ano, I'll show you a, a diagram, not a diagram, it's a animation on how your phagocytosis happen. Ako na si Chica, okay, hindi na yung audio. So, here, as you can see, we have a pathogen, a bacterium, a bacteria in a phagocyte. So your this bacteria was initially coated already by an opsonin. Okay, how did I know? I know kasi napanood ko na itong video. And as you can see guys, once that your um once that your phagocyte adhere, okay? Magzo-zoom in tayo diyan. You can see that there are some opsonins that attach itself to the bacteria. So you have your bacteria and you have your complement proteins. Yang C3B na yan complement protein po yan. Pag-aaralan natin yan siguro mga fourth week ata, fourth week ng ating discussion. So, yan yung mga na natin, yan yung mga, um, eto yung ating mga complement protein. Complement protein na nag-coat 
dun sa ating bacteria. Anong process ulit yon? Opsonization. Ay, so, anong tawag natin sa complement protein na to? These are your opsonins. Okay? So, it will adhere, okay, um, certain receptors will now uh, bind, okay? At once na mag-bind yan, immediately, agad-agad, okay, it will now enter your, um, it will now enter your cell, okay? It enter your cell in a vacuum called your phagosome, and then it will now start to be um, introduced with your lysosome. So your lysosome will fuse with your phagosome, creating now your phagolysosome, and releasing the digestive enzymes. Now the digestive enzymes are secreted. We can now digest the bacteria and after that we can excrete it out of the body okay where pwedeng i-introduce sa 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 pwedeng i-introduce sa lymphocyte or talagang tapos na ah, ang laban at debris na lamang siya sa ating katawan so in a nutshell that is how your phagocytosis happen okay so are we clear can i share a hand kung malinaw tayo so far with phagocytosis Malinaw. Okay? So, kanina, sabi ko nga, your cells or your fat pathogen needs to be digested and excreted. And there are actually two ways how um, how we eliminate organism via phagocytosis. Okay? How? How, 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 the carabao? That is first through oxygen-dependent processes. A lot of your, um, a lot of your, uh, what do you call this? A lot of your enzymes are oxygen dependent. They create, okay, we increase oxygen consumption and it, it occurs as soon as the pseudopodia enclose the particle within the vacuole. And this is how it looks like. So our um our cell kasi has is capable of producing superoxides. These superoxides, okay, yung mga um reactive oxygen molecules na ito, like hydrogen peroxide, ayan, your catalase, your hydroxyl radical, all of these are generated and are all targeted to your mic to your microorganism. Remember that these ano, remember that these um, enzymes yan, may yellow peroxidase, the oxygen um, the oxygen radicals or yung mga reactive oxygens natin. They will bind to the or to the cell wall or the cell, the, yeah, the cell wall of your bacteria, and it will lyse the bacteria. Kaya napapatay natin yung bacteria. That is kapag ox, um, oxygen-dependent. Simple lang naman, pag oxygen-dependent, kailangan nyo ng oxygen. Kasi kung makikita ninyo, lahat ito are um, um, reactive oxygen variants. Okay? Another way on how our um, cell destroys are through the help of other humoral components like your defensin and your catepsin. Ito hindi nila kailangan ng oxygen, okay? It is not oxygen, it is oxygen independent, okay? So it only needs your defensins and your catepsins, okay? So yan yung ano natin, process natin, oxidative burst, ang tinata oh, I think tinatawag natin na oxidative burst, oxidative burst where the microorganisms are killed through um, oxygen-dependent processes. Okay? So, ito po yung pangyayaring yan. Now, for our next meeting, um, I will anchor our next meeting with this already. So, dito ko i-kuhugutin. Okay, meron pa akong 10 minutes. Sige, discuss ko na tong part na to bag para next meeting, ano na tayo, diretso tayo ng natural killer cells. So, uh, sabi nga natin, di ba, um, ang normal na ano normal na mission sa buhay ng mga phagocyte natin kumain ng mga pathogen at ang isang kailangan nilang gawin is to kill the bacteria through oxidative burst but there is a disease which we call your chronic granulomatous disease okay in your chronic granulomatous disease ang problema natin dito kin wala yung enzymes na kailangan for oxygen dependent processes okay sulat mo na to Kasi hindi to lala, wala nang other chemi na lalabas. Okay? So, chronic granulomatous disease is very important for us to take note kasi our body lacks enzymes that is needed for oxygen um, oxygen 
um, dependent processes to take place. So, anong nangyari? Pag chronic granulomatous disease, engulf, na-engulf lang yung bacteria, hindi napatay. Okay? Um, and in this case, sakit ito. Kasi nga, hindi napapatay yung mga microorganisms. Nagkakaintindihan tayo. Can I see a raise of hand? So, that is chronic granulomatous disease. Um, you lack, okay? You have an abnormal oxygen Uh, oxidative burst na hindi napapatay yung mga cells or yung mga pathogen. Next, meron tayong lazy leukocyte syndrome. Meron din tayong jobs syndrome. Sa kanina, uh, sabi ko, di ba, merong two types of movement or two types of activity ang ating white blood cell. Ano yung, ano yung dalawang yon? Random and yung chemotactic activity niya. Ano ulit yung test natin for chemotactic activity? What is the test for chemotactic activity? Boyden chamber assay. Okay, correct. Your Boyden chamber assay. Okay? Your Boyden chamber assay is a test for your um for your it is a test for your chemotactic activity. So ano meron kapag may lazy leukocyte syndrome tayo? Okay? Kay lazy leukocyte syndrome, ang problema natin um may abnormal siya na random meron din siyang abnormal na chemotactic activity. In a sense that, kunwari, instead na papalapit, lumalayo siya. Uh, okay, so lazy leukocyte syndrome, may abnormality, both movement, okay? Both activity. Random and chemotactic activity, parehas na may problema. Okay, again, lazy leukocyte syndrome is a type of abnormality in your leukocyte where your Um, random activity and your chemotactic activity are both abnormal. Okay? Na gets po tayo kay lazy leukocyte syndrome. Can I see a raise of honey for clear? Okay. That is lazy leukocyte. Uh, lazy leukocyte, random at chemotactic, both abnormal. When it comes to Jobs syndrome, okay, Jobs syndrome, we have a normal random activity but abnormal chemotactic activity. Okay? Normal yung random, abnormal si chemotactic activity. Okay? That is for your Jobs syndrome. Okay? Again, for your Jobs syndrome, normal random activity, abnormal chemotactic activity. That is for your Jobs syndrome. Are we clear? Can I see a raise of hand if we're clear? So, yun ha. Ra uh, chronic granulomatous, abnormality in your oxidative burst, lazy leukocyte, um, abnormal random and chemotactic activity, job syndrome, abnormal chemotactic activity, normal random activity. So, maybe some of you, sir, ano, ano ngayon, sir, kung abnormal yung chemotactic nila, ibig sabihin, kapag oras na kailangan sila dun sa site of infection for phagocytosis, wala sila dun. Kasi nga, yung chemotactic activity nila, hindi responsive. Nagigets tayo doon? So kahit gaano kadaming positive chemotaxins ang ipadala, no show. Ginose ka na ng mga leukocytes mo. Okay? So, yun yung problema. Yung isa naman, nag-show up. Diba? <laughs> Sa chronic granulomatous disease naman, ang, ang eksena natin, I, at least I showed up. Nag-show up pero wala namang ginawa. Okay? Kasi hindi niya rin napatay yung mga pathogens na kailangan niyang buksain. Okay? So, with that, I still have five minutes. For your chronic, um, sabi nga natin, um, Boyden Chamber um, assay, ang pwede natin gamitin to identify lazy leukocyte and job syndrome. Eh, sir, paano naman yung chronic granulomatous disease? In your chronic granulomatous disease, sabi nga natin, it affects the neutrophil microbicidal action. Kasi nga, impaired yung kanyang NADPH oxidase production. So, what test can we perform? We can perform your nitro blue tetrazolium test. Your nitro blue tetrazolium test, your nitro blue tetrazolium is a colorless compound. Okay? Anong gagawin natin? Imimix natin si nitro blue tetrazolium, o oh, kung ikaw nagdo-drawing ka, blood plus nitrozolium tetrazol, uh, nitro blue tetrazolium, okay? Um, i-reduce niya. Okay? When reduction happens, okay? When reduction happens, the colorless yung kapag uh, ayan, yung colorless okay, yung colorless color obviously ng nitro blue tetrazolium 
will create a blue precipitate. Okay? So, anong ibig sabihin yan? Okay? So, um, this is to measure kung kaya ba natin i-convert yung, yung colorless uh, nitro-blue tetrazolium to a blue precipitate. And it, co it can only happen, okay? It can only happen kapag meron kang um, enough na NAD oxidase or yung mga enzymes, okay? So, again, we are using this to test, okay? We are using this to test your what? We are using this to test your um, chronic granulomatous disease. So, kung makikita ninyo, yung chronic granulomatous disease natin, walang walang blue colors, walang nag-change, kasi positive to, okay? Um, positive siya sa chronic granulomatous disease, negative siya sa net nitro blue tetrazolium test. Yung positive natin, merong bluish, may blue precipitate within the cell, that signifies a positive result, okay? That signifies a positive result. Ibig sabihin, present yung NADPH oxidase sa iyong katawan. Malinaw po ba tayo, mga kababayan? Can I see a race of honey for clear? Malinaw pa tayo sa part na to? So again ha, pag may chronic granulomatous disease, anong color? Anong nakikitang kulay? Colorless. Walang color. Pag nag, may blue precipitate, okay, normal. Okay, okay po ang ating pasyente. Meron po siyang NADPH oxidase. Okay? So, yun lang din. And aside from that, there's also a flow cytometric assay. Last two minutes. A flow cytometric assay. So, dito naman sa flow cytometric assay, simple lang. Yung mga neutrophils natin, they will be labeled with dihydrorhodamine. Okay? Color orange to. Yellowish orange. Ganyan. So, magkakaroon siya ng dihydrorhodamine. Uh, dihydrorhodamine. So, ilalabel natin yung neutrophil natin ng dihydrorhodamine. Tapos, um, i-activate natin yung neutrophil. Activate ang, ang activator natin are your 4-ball myristate acetate or your PMA. Again, your 4-ball myristate acetate or your PMA. Okay? Tapos, Patients with chronic granulomatous disease would have less fluorescence. Bakit less yung fluorescence nila? Because even in the presence of your four-ball myristate acetate, hindi sila na-activate kasi nga wala silang NADPH oxidase. Okay? Nakailangan for that. Okay? So, this is a new procedure to diagnose your chronic granulomatous disease. Ha? So, less fluorescence, CGD. No blue precipitate, CGD pa rin. Okay? Your chronic granulomatous disease. Okay? Anong meron kay chronic granulomatous disease? Impaired yung NADPH oxidase production niya or yung oxidative burst during bacterial digestion. Okay? With that, okay, that ends my discussion for today. Okay? Maraming maraming. Okay? Maraming maraming salamat for listening. So now, I'll give you some time if you have any questions or clarification. Danny, please stop the recording.